We're nearing the end of MLB The Show 23 with some news for 24 hopefully fast upon us. Welcome back to another episode of Best in Show. My name is Kasavi. As we do throughout the year, we take a look at the best team builds for both meta and true overall. What we do is we divide it by set. So if you're still grinding team affinity programs or something like that where you need innings with set specific players, this will be a helpful guide for you to look back and see what players were the best to use and make your grinds go a bit easier. We'll take a look at the meta overall squad first, and as all of us were anticipating, clamoring for, Willie Mays is finally here. It is a God Squad Willie Mays that is the best card in set five by a few points in terms of meta overall score, a 116.35. You'll see all the other top cards in the lineup are a 113 or a 114 for the most part. So that tells you how great this Willie Mays card is. It kind of stinks that it came this late in the year, but you know, we finally got a 99 Willie Mays. I think we can all be very happy with that. But as you look at the lineup here, a lot of 23 finest cards, and some of those are cards that have pretty similar value or overall cards from earlier in the year. So I've seen a lot of comparisons on social media between this Ellie de la Cruz card to his previous one so there's like the milestone that came in the chase pack versus this 23 finest card a couple other guys on there as well so Mookie Betts has his 23 finest card Ronald Acuna very deserving of getting a milestone card for his 40 40 season it is pretty close to his all-star game card in terms of effectiveness attributes and everything but another well-deserved card that I definitely think should have been made so that is your lineup right there. A couple of throwbacks in here, including Gary Sheffield at third base and Brian Roberts, normally a second baseman. We slid him in at shortstop. Looking at the bench, the game does recommend having at least one catcher on your bench. So we have two right here, including Adley Rutschman and Contreras. Contreras, of course, can flex to other positions across the field. Cody Bellinger, a good first base option, as well as outfielder too. And then a few infielders, including a future stars O'Neill Cruz. So I think SDS was kind of hoping they could have made an O'Neill Cruz card earlier in the year, but tore up his knee and unfortunately missed a large majority of the season. So this was a card that you could find in standard packs for a limited time. It's kind of like the Finders Keepers before Finders Keepers was actually introduced but a great card nonetheless, and good enough to make your bench. Looking at the first out cards, there are some cards as a part of that Finders Keepers program, including Kyle Seeger, who's one of the collection rewards early on. He was the five tier reward, and then they released Brian Roberts for getting 15. But even so, being the collection reward, it wasn't enough to crack our lineup. Uh, some other misses or just first out players are Yasmani Grandal's finest card at catcher. If you like having a switch hitting catcher there have also been a large number of julio rodriguez cards this year his 23 finest he is right on the cusp of making our squad if you like having a lot more speed on your bench he is a good option to flex in if you don't like one of the options on the bench moving on to the rotation me personally just looking at this list there's a few really good names and a few that kind of make me scratch my head just because of what i know of the competitive standard so catfish hunter is one of your top starters he's the fourth best rated starter in the meta overall squad i know a lot of you will probably disagree with that when you look at people like corbin burns or jesus lazardo but he is up there he is one of the best starting pitchers in set five if you're looking for somebody who's of a similar skill in case you want to flex him over here are the first out so senga with his ghost fork ball jr richer with his hard fastball you can definitely flex that in for catfish hunter if you'd like finest is a program that really starts to shine on some bullpen arms as well in other sets and seasons you see some names in the bullpen that are added via tops now or monthly awards so this is like the best of the best. The biggest relievers come to the forefront in finest. So my Minnesota Twins have had Johan Duran in there for two straight years. Uh, there are some throwbacks as well. So for the second straight year, towards the end of the year, we've had Troy Percival, Joe Nathan added there, Lee Smith as a part of the Finders Keepers program. Also some great 2023 players, Felix Batista, Raldis Chapman got added right to the end of the game. He had a solid year, kind of a bounce back year, I would say between his time in Kansas City and Texas. And another great lefty to pair with Chapman, Josh Hader, just makes the bullpen in the eighth spot. A couple of the first out cards, there is a significant dip from the eight to the ninth spot, but we do have Evan Phillips, Camilo Doval, a couple other options there from the 23 finest cards. So taking a look at the meta overall squad as a whole, 
the bullpen again there's eight really good names and it starts to drop off a bit starting pitchers some great options i know some people struggle a little bit with shohei otani due to the amount of homers that he lets up but i'd say a really strong lineup all things considered people really rake with brian roberts a lot of other star names on that list from the 23 finest program and gary sheffield along with a couple other retro finest cards with max power man you could flex in a lot of cards into this lineup and it would be solid for you if you're grinding team affinity and i think that was kind of the point of set five we're near the end of the season we've seen a lot of 97 overall cards that you collect as a part of team affinity those were up to 99s because it is that part of the year where you know maybe you just want to hit some dingers on rookie mode, do some parallel five grinding, or just get a 99 overall card for somebody who might not have gotten one this point in the year. All around, some solid names that you could add into the lineup. I do think the rotation is a little bit weaker. They have a little bit more of a retro focus compared to maybe some of the others where Hal Newhauser and Catfish Hunter are some of your top options. So starting pitchers, a little bit on the downside. Then again, you guys have faced tough pitching all year with the likes of Randy Johnson, Nolan Ryan, John Donaldson. So uh, now that set six and like the forever program is a part of this, you start to see some of those names again. Just if you're grinding mini seasons, for example, you won't see a couple of those names against you via the computer playing you. Moving on to the true overall squad, Adley Rutschman, as mentioned, was on the bench in the meta overall squad. He's made the jump to the true overall squad, which I think has a lot to do with his switch hitting ability. We try and put a good weight on it in the meta overall squad, but true overall, I think likes that as well. They like the ability to hit all over the field. It also really takes into account fielding, which Rutschman has some better feeling than the likes of maybe Cal Raleigh or Yasmani Grandal. So he is your starting catcher. Cody Bellinger slides into the first base slots, but again, you can flex him over into the outfield if you prefer. Really solid outfield though, with some speed, some good fieldings. I mean, between the likes of Acuna, Willie Mays and Mookie Betts, that's a really solid defensive outfield right there. Brian Roberts shifts back to second base and in place at shortstop is Bo Bichette's 23 finest card, which snuck into the true overall lineup. Gary Sheffield still at third base. Again, true overall kind of rewards a little bit more contact, speed, and fielding than it does power, but that just tells you how solid this Gary Sheffield card is, where they still are putting him at third base as a defensive option, a good, viable, all-around card. On the bench, there might be a little bit of confusion seeing Joe Carter up there compared to everybody else on this list, but Joe Carter can play first base as well as somebody like Cody Bellinger. He is four points higher at first base than he is in the outfield, so that's why you kind of see the first score there. That's his natural position of the outfield. Another outfielder that can also play first base, Bryce Harper. You can definitely flex him in if you prefer him over Bellinger or Joe Carter. And once again, true overall really loves the speedy players so as you can see on the bench you have three speed demons like corbin carroll julio rodriguez and tim Raines. Uh, a lot of interchangeable parts if you feel like your batting is better with one player over the other but again speed defense tend to be the way to go in true overall squads looking at the first out cards if you wanted to flex in one of those outfielders for an infielder there's the jimmy rollins card and marcus simeon Unfortunately, they're not as flexible in terms of the amount of defensive positions they can play, but a couple other great outfielders too, Shohei Otani, Kyle Tucker, if you want a little bit more pop in your bat compared to somebody like Tim Raines. Moving on to the rotation, a couple other older players that we saw in the meta overall team, but there are some different names in the true overall squad, so Hal Newhauser moves up to the top true overall position. Milestone Cy Young, one of the program rewards, is now at the two spot. Jesus Lazardo is one of your first out. He was the top meta overall pitcher, but in true overall rating, he's down to seven. In the bullpen, a lot of hard throwers here. Tom Henke is the top overall in terms of true rating. He is a 102.15. Devin Williams seems to make an appearance in a lot of these categories as well because of his per nines, but that screwball is just so lethal when used effectively. I know meta tends to favor a bit more of the sinker cutter combination but Devin Williams you can really just throw some loops in there uh, and really fool your opponents if you have them in your bullpen and again some throwback finest cards like Lee Smith Troy Percival Joe Nathan we alluded to those earlier in the meta overall squad they do have a good pitch mix Lee Smith he has a good fork ball Troy Percival has a nasty slow 12-6 curve and Joe Nathan I guess does too now that I think about it 
Looking at the first out, a few 23 finest cards, including Josh Hader. He was good to be the 8th best in the meta overall squad, but ninth best in true overall, just missing the cut. Part of that is just his walks per 9 and control. So if you can wrangle the beast, by all means, use him in your bullpen. So that's going to do it for set 5. Any surprises on your guys' part? Are there any cards that you feel like should be in here? And again... There are some that were very, very close. So some of those retro finest cards that you got in Team Affinity, SDS really juiced some of their power. There are a lot of cards that had 125 splits across left and right in terms of power, just some of them a bit better defensively than others. So if you like clubbing some homers with some of those other guys, they're just a wee bit worse defensively, by all means, flex them in. It's that part of the year where no one really cares. Just use the cards that you feel are going to be the best but if you really want to use the best of the best these are the teams that are recommended coming up in a couple weeks once the last finders keepers cards are released we will make a final best in show for all of the cards that have been released throughout mlb the show 23 now that it's set six again you can use everybody there are no limitations we're just waiting for the final few cards to be released before we make that best in show so there's at least two more as a part of the finders keepers program that will be released we might get a 99 overall card for the cover athlete you never know but until those final cards are finalized we will wait on making that video have a final wrap up and a bow on mlb the show 23 and mlb the show 24 will be coming soon hopefully we'll have some news by the end of january but let me know what you guys are excited for in the new MLB The Show 24 season. Are you excited for sets and seasons to come back? Do you have any suggestions for how to polish things up from the first year of sets and seasons in MLB The Show 23? Let me know all about it in the comments section. But for now, this is Kasabi. We'll see you next time.